Hi, my name is Amanda McCulloch, and I'm going to talk about a personal story about visualization and genetic testing and go back to the user perspective. This has been top of mind for me because of the number of Ancestry.com advertisements I've seen in the past week and a half since the Black Friday sale launched, and also since listening to all the different conversations this week, or the last two days really, about the importance of thinking about who's in the data. And I would just say, if you're considering a Christmas gift, just read some of the articles about the data sharing agreements before you purchase one for your friends, family, and colleagues. Uh, most people are familiar with the heritage-based testing, the genetic tests like Ancestry.com or 23andMe. These are the tests that give you information about your heritage, where you come from, where your ancestors came from, and sometimes can map you to other people. There are also additional medical tests that are less talked about, but are very commonly done more in the medical space based on risk for things like the BRAC analysis or the myriad my risk screening. My nervousness is that as you develop more and more tests that are consumer facing, how we deliver results to people matters a lot more. As the potential health impact of the results that you're receiving actually increases, the care required in the delivery of those results also increases a lot. And for me personally, I had a very personal experience with this in 2016, which was the year that my dad had his second bout with kidney cancer, um, had his second kidney removed, and we learned that our family was a carrier for Lynch syndrome which one in 300 Americans have, but only about 5% of people actually know that they have it. And this actually put me in the seat going from being a visualization designer to being a visualization consumer, who actually received visual information back that really frustrated me. So I want to talk about the report that you get back when you do one of these very medical tests and the frustrating place of being a master's in public health who has done a lot of work with health information visualization and feeling really frustrated with what got served back to me. And it reiterated for me why our conversations on color and on uncertainty are so very important. The top of the results, which I can't actually share with you, I thought I could just pull it up and show you, but apparently there are rules about that with Myriad and what you can share, are that you have a positive result at the top that says you have a clinically significant mutation. And under that it says, high cancer risk. Very helpful. Next up. What are the patient's gene-related cancer risks? This is page two of the lovely PDF that my doctor emailed to me and I read right before going on stage to speak to 100 people. Great day. Uh, what are the patient's gene-related cancer risks? So this looks something like this. There are a number of red bars, some orange bars where they're not as certain, and it lists out the various cancer types. There were 10 on my list. The cancer risk range, the confidence interval that they have the risk in the general population and which mutation it's related to. This is disturbing to open up and see and look at when it's about your actual health information. Those risks are very different. The risk for me for one of the cancers was 55 to 82% compared to a general population risk of 1.9%. And I would argue that that kind of information needs more care than what's displayed in this kind of table. So it's really hard when you look at those numbers to not focus on the highest number on the screen. So you look at that highest number at 82%, and a four out of five chance of getting some kind of crazy cancer just doesn't sound all that great. The third page has a list of what management for cancer risks should be considered. We go back to a lot more red bars that tell us which body part you're probably gonna get cancer in and what you should do for, for preventive screenings. And the good news is this is actionable information. It tells me what I can do and where I can go and how I can go ahead and prevent myself from being in this position and to take care of my health. And so from receiving this information back and thinking about the fact that I am actually a consumer and visualizer of health information myself, all I could think of was how frustrated I would be if I didn't have more context and background on how to actually interpret and use these results. So I would offer up that there are three questions that we can consider, whether you're a data viz designer who happens to work at Myriad, anyone, anyone, no? <laughs> Uh, three questions that we can consider as we think about how the potential health impact or other kind of personal decision-making impact increases and, in turn, the care required in the delivery of the results. First, how will someone actually see themselves in the data? When I went ahead and sent this test off, I put myself into their data set, so I'm in that data now. And thinking about how this got displayed for me and the confusion I felt, where it was hard to actually evaluate the relative risk of different kinds of cancer, was really frustrating. But second, how precisely should results actually be displayed when we have so much uncertainty in these big wide ranges, when we're looking at numbers like 55 to 82%. It's because there's a relatively small sample of people who they know have these mutations, so they're giving the most precise estimate that they can. But even a little bit of better visualization, 
especially across various different kinds of cancers, would help us better assess and understand how close or how far am I away from the general population risk, and also how wide are those risk esti estimates. And this morning we saw a lot of great examples of ways to visualize uncertainty in data, but even something really simple would help a little bit in terms of making it easier to actually interpret and understand what I'm looking at. And third, and the thing that worries me the most in this kind of consumer-facing genetic testing environment is really how is the information delivered? I fired my PCP after she emailed me the test results. I wasn't thrilled uh, <laughs> in terms of health access. But um, when you actually go ahead and you get one of these personal genetic testing services, you get a report back that you click on or you open up. And functionally, there's no one there explaining that information to you. And in an environment where we have a lot of constraints over access to health care, not everyone's gonna go seek out a genetic counselor. I get really nervous about the idea of someone opening up one of these test results and not really knowing what they can actually do with the information. So I would argue that in the data community and with, as data visualization designers, we can do a lot better in terms of how we visualize information than these kind of awful shaded tables. Because at the end of the day, we have to think about the fact that there are people who are actually embedded in that data represented in that data, and actually seeing and interpreting that data, and having it create a very emotional response for them. So with that, I would challenge you that if you're ever presenting especially complicated or impactful health results or other information, really think about the ways in which you're representing that data with your various choices on color, display, and other ways that you're trying to communicate that information and help someone make a really important decision. Thank you.